Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by. Today, we'll be taking a look at Gwal's Delonza as our journey through the Ad Stella timeline continues. I have featured this kit before on the channel quite some time ago, but decided to redo it because there were some things I wasn't satisfied with. The original video is still staying on the channel just because it went up before the kit was even available in retailers outside of Japan, and that makes me feel cool, but I digress. Anyways, with that out of the way, Let's get to work. The box art on the kit is much needed. After seeing the relatively lackluster attempt on the aerial, this one has actual movement. I like how the B partisan takes up so much of the artwork, dwarfing the already massive and chunky Delonza. Enough box art talk though. Inside the box are three main runners for the main Delonza body with two smaller ones for the kit exclusive blade antenna, back skirt shoulder shields, and the beam partisan. You also get a noticeably smaller sticker sheet than on what we've seen before. Compared to the other Witch for Mercury kits we've built so far in this series, the Delonza definitely ranks on the lower end. There's less of an inner frame, and the legs feature the worst seam lines I've encountered in a while, with only two piece assemblies for both the thighs and lower legs. There's only closed hands, but that's most of the hits in this lineup. The way the head goes together is so secure you can't really pull it apart, which can be fixed by cutting off the pegs, and it'll still be plenty tight and you can glue the two halves into place later. Even with the downsides, I like this kit a lot. The design of the Delonza makes up for most of the problems in my opinion. I like how chunky it is and how the head looks like a Roman helmet with that large neck guard. The B Partisan is also my favorite melee weapon we've seen in the series so far. There's just something about a big spear that I find really cool. The kit uses a lot of C-clips which makes it easy to take things apart for priming, yet the C-clips are hidden by the frame parts. It also features an extensive use of slide molds, allowing for really complex parts to be molded as single pieces. Those shoulder shields are pretty crazy in terms of ejection molding, even featuring detail on the underside. Although there's less colors on this versus something like the aerial, the color separation is nice, which comes in handy if you build your kits out of the box. No color corrections needed. There's a surprising amount of articulation as well. I really appreciate the double joints at the elbow, which is a novelty in this kit lineup. So while this kit lags behind the Lubris, Ariel, and even the Beggar Beo, I like it. The differences might come as a shock if you're used to something like the Ariel, but it still has some nice bits of engineering. The leg seams still suck though. I primed with Mr. Finishing Servicer 1500, so any spots of primer I miss can be interpreted as shadows, and then sprayed a coat of Tamiya TS100 Semi-Bright Gloss Gun Metal. These Delonzas really eat up primer. Now it's time to paint the frame with Vallejo's German Grey. I'll also paint this on the inside surfaces without any rules regarding which parts I choose, I'm just going off what I feel like. I normally stick with Basalt Grey, but I wanted to shake things up. German Grey is a nice alternative, and I've even used it on my regular Universal Sentry builds in admittedly smaller amounts. That's mainly why I chose this color, to make things a little different from what's typical. While I'm focusing on these areas, I'll also paint the pipes. I'm using a light gray for this, which is a nice look. I need to do this on my normal Zaku builds. The brush I'm using might seem alarming. It's a number 5 round, which at first glance seems too large. But this is why I use round brushes instead of flat brushes, the pointed tip, which allows me to be quite precise. As long as you know where your brush is when you're painting, you'll be perfectly fine. Now it's time to paint the chest. I'm introducing quite a few extra colors on the chest that aren't there originally. There was the light gray for the pipes, but there's an industrial turquoise on some of the details, a color I took from my G-Self, and one you'll be seeing on the standard Delonza video. There's also some green gray for the ammo boxes, and some red you'll be seeing in a bit for those areas under the chest machine guns. The chest is probably my favorite part of this build, color-wise. The way the different colors go together is pretty nice. The main color is a dark brownish mixture, 
with some gray and blue added. The result is something pretty similar to the German gray, probably because it's part of the mixture. I do like it. I feel brown is an underrated color, especially a dark brown like this. It's pretty neutral so it'll go with a lot of things, but it's different enough from a gray to be interesting in its own right. Using dark brown instead of gray also gives me the feeling that I actually know what I'm doing when pairing colors together since it is less so obvious of a choice than gray is. Now it's time for the main color, I'm going with a magenta. If you've been following this series, you may be surprised at how similar this paint scheme is compared to how we see Guel Zalanza in the anime. I have said before that I'm trying not to do any basic repaints. I am making the exception because I like the colors, and because I have to finish these kits within a certain time frame, not to mention how many kits are in this lineup. I think there's 23 in total, not counting the expansion sets. So, while I could come up with an original color scheme, I'm perfectly fine with doing my take on what we see in the anime. I'm not being 100% faithful to the original colors though, introducing bits and pieces of my own personality through those small details, like all the different colors you see on the chest. I also did try something bolder the last time I built this kit. That being said, this particular color on this particular design is one that has so much personality it's kind of hard to come up with a substitute. While the magenta dries, I wanted to take a quick break and paint the various head parts I haven't focused on so far. First is the eye sensor. There is no metallic undercoat, just the black primer. I'm painting on some Mr. Metal Color Gold. I started out this build series using Mr. Metal Color and I'm trying to use it on as many of these kits as possible. I really like this paint line and if you want to see an in-depth look at these paints, I recommend the video I made on Lubris. It was painted entirely in Mr. Metal Color paints. When that paint dries, which is almost instantly, I'll paint over it with some clear yellow. Then, it's time to paint that giant feather. I want something a bit bolder than the white it comes bolded in, so I'm adding some stripes. It's inspired by the crests on Greek or Roman helmets, and is a bit of a callback to my first attempt at painting this kit, where I did black and white stripes on the shoulder shields to be as obnoxious as possible. I'm eyeballing the width and angle of these stripes. I also paint in multiple shades of light and dark grey, to give the impression that this is made of multiple layers. It's a neat concept, but I really don't have enough practice doing this kind of thing to make it work the way I imagined. I'm sure miniature painters have a better way of tackling this sort of technique. But back to the magenta. All of these curved surfaces made this take such a long time. In the aerial video, I talked about how that was tedious, but these curved surfaces put this build on just another level. It's why so much of this painting footage is in time lapse. All of these parts are on alligator clips so I can hit them with a hair dryer which is just off screen. When I dry the paint with the hair dryer, I'll spin the part which prevents the paint from pooling. Seriously, the idea of paint pooling haunted me for the duration of the painting process, always remembering last year's space donut build. I wanted a darker purple on some areas. This is the color I used on my previous Delonza attempt, so just like the feather, it's a bit of a callback to that build. I could totally imagine Guel being like, paint a second slightly darker purple on my custom suit, and since he's the son of Jeturk's CEO, the people painting his Delonza would have to listen.
I wanted a yellowish orange for the thrusters. Brighter oranges can be tricky to hand paint, so before I paint the main color, I'll paint these parts in a darker orange and then go in afterwards with the final color. It's an idea I got based on my newer heat hawk painting method which is pretty much identical except for the emission of fluorescent oranges. The beam partisan is being painted red just like last time. I like red on this weapon. The color reminds me of the Lance of Longinus. It also does some neat visual storytelling as Gwell gets the Darlbalda afterwards which is also red. I sprayed a coat of Tobia PS58 Pearl Clear. It is a little difficult to properly gauge how heavy the effect is as you spray it, but I like how it turned out. It's a way of adding another touch of personality to an otherwise very anime accurate paint scheme. I think Gwell would approve. These decals are from the G Rework set for this kit. Typical of G Rework, you get some markings specific for the kit, as well as some generic stencils to use as you please. This is my third time using G Rework specific sets for these Witch for Mercury kits, and I noticed something really awesome about these decals. Each of these different sets generic stencil and caution markings are actually different. This reflects the in-universe lore of different mobile suits being produced by different companies. It's a neat little touch that makes G Rework a company I go back to over and over again. They're also the ones consistently making new sets for these kits as far as I'm aware. I do know Delpy is making sets for these kits, but G Rework is unmatched in how quickly they make these. In addition to the Beg Rebeo and Ariel I've used in previous videos, they also have the Darlbalda and Lubris. After letting the decals dry, I could finally do some physical chipping. This was weird in the sense that I had to be heavier than usual because I'm chipping through an additional paint layer, but light enough as I didn't want to remove large chunks of the pearl clear. In some cases, I only chipped off the pearl clear instead of working down to the metallic. I'm also only using a knife instead of tweezers because of the extra layer. To me, rattle cans dry super tough, so I don't think I'd be able to do anything with tweezers. Because of the pearl, it felt like my blade was catching on the paint surface. It's kind of hard to explain. Especially since this is my first time chipping through an additional layer of paint, at least intentionally. The pearl is from Tamiya's PS line of rattle cans, which is actually meant for Lexan instead of polystyrene. It's a different kind of plastic that you really only see in RC car bodies. That being said, I like how it turned out. The extra paint layer added a level of dimensionality I don't really get when I normally chip my paint. The chips and scratches look so much deeper, and like my usual physical chipping, it's so much finer than any attempt with a brush to paint on chips. It's time for a pin wash. Nothing too out of the ordinary, but just like everything else in this build series, the Delanza has so much detail to highlight with the wash. These new kits are pretty unrivaled in how long these pin wash sessions actually take. While doing a pin wash, I make sure to not only use as thin of a brush possible, but one that's as short as possible. That way, whenever I do get any spillage outside of the details, it isn't really obvious since there isn't that much paint on the brush in the first place. Even though the sheer tediousness of the paint wash makes it something I put off for as long as possible, the results are worth it. It's super impressive seeing all of the details come out at you and it really brings things to life. Now I'm just giving things an overall patito with a dark brown wash mixture. Nothing unexpected, but it is interesting to see how it looks over that pearl. After several passes of the speckling, I'll clean most of it off by vertically shrieking downwards with a flat brush, which creates super fine streaks of filth that immediately make the kit seem aged.
The final piece to paint is the beam rifle of course, and you'll never guess what colors I'll be using. Not even this new timeline is safe from the basalt green grey combo, but after this, I sprayed the bottle with a coat of Mr. Hobby's semi-gloss premium top coat, I just felt it would work better with the pearl. Here's what Bell's Delonza looks like in the bare plastic. And here's what Bell's Delonza looks like after a little work. I know this one is less creative compared to the previous Witcher Mercury videos, but I still like it. It's nice to have some actual color on my Witcher Mercury display instead of something metallic or grayscale. And as usual, this isn't an explicit statement on what you should be doing with your own Gumpla, but look into my own process. Moving forwards, we'll stay at Jaturk Heavy Industries as we tackle the Delonza yet again. This time, it'll be loud as Delonza, although the kit gives you the option to build the standard one as well. If the video comes out a little later, I apologize in advance since I am building and painting both versions. If you like the video, consider supporting the channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one, whenever that is.